Hi, I would like to talk a little bit uh, with you about the secondary chakras. Most people know about the seven main chakras which build up our personality structure. Um, but we also have secondary chakras which have nothing to do with our personality but which do have a lot to do with just keeping our body going and our body functioning. And several of these chakras we actually use on a daily basis but we are not that aware of it. It is a little bit like breathing or keeping your heart beating. They just do their job and when everything is going fine then you don't really notice that you're breathing or that your heart is beating. And this is also why we don't tend to notice our secondary chakras very much. But just like we can learn to control our breathing and even our heartbeat, it's also possible to become aware of these secondary chakras and to start using them consciously. And in the same way as we can calm ourselves down by slowing down our breathing, or we can excite ourselves by uh, accelerating our breathing. In the same way we can also change our inner states by working with these secondary chakras. Um, there are different schools of thought um, as to how many different chakras there are. and It's very important to realize what the essence of a chakra is. The chakra is basically a portal through which energy of a very specific vibration can enter into our bodies or can leave our bodies. So it is an energy which is usually all over, but it has a specific gate, a sluice, through which it can more easily enter or exit. So we can use a chakra both to project energies and we can use a chakra to absorb energies. Most of these secondary chakras are actually used more to absorb energies than to emanate energies, with the hand chakras being uh, one of the exceptions. But every chakra is able to do both functions, to send energy and to receive energy. So even with your eyes or your ears, which you generally only use to receive energies with, we can also turn those around and use them to send energies. The problem with finding the secondary chakras is finding the right vibration and every vibration um, yeah, in a way corresponds to one or several chakras. So a chakra has, you could say, a kind of a range and some people's chakras are very specific, very narrow, they only have a very s small bandwidth of energies, other people's chakras are much more wide so they can deal with a different bandwidth of energies. If people have chakras which have a very wide bandwidth, often also one chakra can more or less compensate for problems with another chakra, which is not functioning very well. The problem of having a very wide bandwidth in, the, uh, in a chakra is also that it can be overtaxed or get confused. because It has to do with lots of different things. It has to be a generalist instead of a specialist. So depending on cir circumstances it is better to be a generalist or a specialist. If the circumstances are very volatile, very uh, changing, then being a generalist is more useful. If the circumstances tend to be more or less stable, then being a specialist is more useful. So there's really not a best way to be uh, but it is possible to in a way, adapt your own energy body to be more specialist or more generalist depending on the situation you find yourself in. And also just to accept that it's in a way a form of natural selection. Depending on the environment a certain different type of energy body is more fit and will serve you better than in other types of environment same way like in a very hot climate it's not very useful to have a very thick fur, in a very cold climate it is. And it's the same way with our energy bodies, they're just adapted um, historically through certain types of circumstances which probably really benefited our ancestors. So when we're talking about secondary chakras we're often talking about chakras which assist or support the function of the primary chakras. 
that are often stimulating the function of one or several of the primary chakras and often also the impulses or energies we gain through these secondary chakras they are used by the more conscious primary chakras so often the energy we pick up through the secondary chakra we only become aware of when it starts to enter one of our primary chakras so this makes it also a little bit tricky to work with these chakras in a more direct manner also because we are generally not that aware of them um, it's harder to get a good control over them through meditation um, but it is with energy it's very much like water it flows following the path of least resistance and if a certain chakra is very well developed it will gather a lot of energy to itself or it will allow a lot of energy to flow out of itself and knowing which chakras are naturally strong within you can help you to uh, use those parts of your body for your energy work so it's a little bit of an introduction I'll give also a little bit of an overview of the most commonly used secondary chakras well one of the most commonly used are the hand chakras we have chakras at the center of the hand at the base of the hand and on every fingertip so these chakras are generally very multi-purpose because we tend to touch lots of things with our hands so it really helps us to um, take the information we get from our hands and usually bring it to our heart to sense more or less what is going on with somebody else or with the object that we're touching um, we can do the same thing using our other sensory organs so we can use our nose chakra our eye chakras our ear chakras and our mouth chakra um, to gather different types of information on different also vibrational levels we tend to pick up different energy vibrations when we're using our hands or using our eyes ears nose or mouth in animals often these uh, sensory chakras are all combined uh, so if you have for instance a dog it will have one huge nose chakra which will actually also absorb uh, uh, visual information and uh, even auditory and taste smell information so they have one multi-purpose chakra while we as humans tend to split things into uh, several different compartments, each of which has its own specialty. Other uh, chakras we can use for sensing things are our elbow chakras, our knee chakras, our ankle chakras and our feet chakras. So all these put together give a very big sensory input and depending on your own personal constitution you might be more sensitive to sound, to listening to people, to looking at people, to touching people, to smell. And smell, you can also smell energies, for instance. And some people also get a taste in their mouth. They can actually taste energies. And besides using the hands for feeling, you can also use the elbows, the knees, the feet. Or, uh, and the front part of the ankles to sense energies. All these spots are very sensitive and we can pick up lots of energies by using them. So we are not limited to using the hands but for most people this is the more or less default way of sensing energies. But I know for instance people who in a way will scan a person's energy body using their ear, putting their ear to the other person instead of their hands it's a little bit yeah different from normal but it works quite well and these chakras just like we can use hands to send energies with you can also use your eyes or your ears to send energies with and if naturally for you your ear chakras might be very well developed then you can also pick up energies through the ear but also send them through your ear so putting your ear against somebody or against a sore spot can also heal that spot for instance and by practicing a chakra 
we can get more and more control over it. So if you find it's very awkward to use your ear all the time and would prefer to use your hands, that's possible. You can in a way transfer certain roles that the chakra is playing to other chakras. So the secondary chakras are usually quite flexible. They're often used to deal with a wide variety of energies. They're not as specialized as the personality chakras are in general. And they also don't suffer as much from using a different energy to, um, to work with it. Also these secondary chakras, these sensory chakras, tend to have a very high throughput. So the energies tend not to stick to them or linger in them and cause a blockage, as they do with the primary personality chakra. A whole other set of secondary chakras are the chakras we use for digestion. So we have chakras in our lungs to take energy out of the air and we have chakras along our um, esophagus and our stomach to absorb energy from the food. A third category of chakras really allows us to work with different types of yeah, energies from our surroundings um, different spirits in our surroundings. Even they allow us to leave our body or to invite other entities to come into our body or uh, to become one with, for instance, the trees, the rocks, the, the land, the air, the water around us and to go into a deeper energetic union with them. So roughly speaking there are three categories of secondary chakras, the ones we use to exchange information with our surroundings for basically uh, the purpose of healing and perception, the digestive chakras which we use to charge our energy body and the more specialized chakras which allow us to become one with our environment. We will go more deeply into these different chakras in uh, different videos going in every chakra one by one.